Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be a quick video to show you how to convert FastStore timestamp to a JavaScript date. We're making this video because it's quite confusing. We've gotten a lot of requests on how to do this already. So we're making a video to make it easy for you to do these date conversions for your app. The reason why it's confusing is because FastStore actually saves date time information in a timestamp variant that is not quite the standard Unix timestamp variant. So FastStore saves date time information information in seconds, which is a compressed version from the standard uh, Unix milliseconds timestamp. So it's it's quite confusing. So what we're going to do is we are going to show you how to do the conversion. So we're going to be decompressing uh, the compressed seconds format to milliseconds. And then we'll be able to take this data and convert it to a JavaScript uh, date format, which is exactly what you want. I think the reason why they are doing this is because saving dates in numbers is actually more efficient because it requires less space to store the same information and you don't need to serialize or pass that information. And because it's seconds and not milliseconds, you actually require a few digits or few bits to store the same amount of dates. So that's probably why they do it. It's confusing, but today we'll look at how to convert that date format into a regular JavaScript date. Uh, so that's all we'll be taking a look at in this video. My name is Confident. I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith and without any delay, let's get started. All right, so right here on my app, I have a blank application because we wouldn't really be building anything. The focus is going to be on converting FastStore timestamp to JavaScript date. So right over at FastStore, I have a customer's collection and this contains just one customer with the name of John and a date of bet right here. You can see this looks very pretty, but trust me, this is not the way this data is stored under the hood in FastStore. I'm going to show you an example. Uh, so we already made a video on connecting FastStore to AppSmith. So go check out this video right here if you do not know how to do that already. Uh, but I have my app connected to my database and I already have a query to read data from that database. I'm just going to run this. And something you see is that we're getting data back, but not in the way you would expect. So we have the user's name, which is John. We have some faster metadata. I'm just going to close this because that's not the focus. But the date of birth is stored very differently from what you saw earlier. So you can see this is an object that contains a seconds part and also a nanoseconds part, which is very, very confusing. So because we know the way this actually works, we actually have a game plan on how to convert this to JavaScript. This is seconds, a compressed uh, timestamp format. What we want to do is expand this to a Unix uh, milliseconds timestamp standard, and then we can take that timestamp convert it to JavaScript date using the date constructor. That's exactly what we're going to be doing. So let's do that. We would need to create a JavaScript file. All right, and I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to call this function to JS date. All right, and what we want to do here is access the data coming back from our query. So I'm going to say const dob is equal to get customers dot data dot okay it's an array so we're going to pick the first item from the array and we can do dot dob and we'll go ahead to return dob you see we just have that date object with the seconds part and also the nanoseconds part so let's actually start converting this to a unix timestamp to do that, we want to grab the seconds and convert it to milliseconds. And how do you do that? I'm just going to create a variable const timestamp is going to be equal to dob.seconds. To convert it to milliseconds, which is the standard, you want to multiply this by 1000 and you have seconds already. And if we go return ts, which is timestamp, that's the value in milliseconds but don't forget we actually also have a nanoseconds part to it so what we want to do is we want to convert nanoseconds to seconds and add it to the dob.seconds and convert the whole to milliseconds if you didn't quite catch that you would understand it when i write the code for it so let's take a look at this um i am going to do exactly what i just said so we have dob.nanoseconds we're going to convert it to seconds, add it to the original seconds, and have that whole 
converted to milliseconds. Let's do that. So this is going to be DOB dot nanos. To convert this to seconds, I'm going to divide this by one billion. So that's one with uh, nine zeros. So let's do that. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then we have it converted to seconds. Now we have that added to the original seconds and we're going to convert the whole to uh, milliseconds by multiplying it by 1000. And then we have the Unix timestamp. Now that we have the Unix time timestamp, we can actually convert this to a JavaScript date. And how do we do that? Using the date constructor. This is very easy. So this is going to be new date and we pass in the timestamp and we're good to go. So if I go ahead to run this, you see now we have that same date as what you saw in Firestore, which is exactly what we want. Now, this is in JavaScript data and it has all of the information we need it to be. And more importantly, it's as accurate as possible because we are not training with the nanoseconds part of the equation. So this is how you actually go ahead to convert Firestore date to JavaScript date if that makes sense. Now, something I'm going to show you is how to make this a lot cleaner. Um, instead of dividing by 1 billion, an equivalent will also be multiplying by 10 to the power of 9. So this is how you can go about it. So this is going to be 10 exponential minus 9. And uh, if I go ahead to run this, you notice we're getting the exact same result because it's exactly the same thing we did earlier. This is the exponentation operator in JavaScript and this is one way to just make your code a lot much cleaner versus writing a series of nine zeros. Uh, so this is much cleaner. This is how you convert faster timestamp to JavaScript date and I hope you found this helpful. All right, that's all for today's video. I hope you found this helpful. If you'd love to learn more about Firestore, we made a video right here on how to upload csv files to faster it's also a feature that faster doesn't have built in so go check that video out on how to do that and we also made a video right here on how to build crud apps with faster admin dashboards uh, admin panels you name it go check that video on how to know how to build crud apps using faster all right that's all for today's video if you found this helpful get subscribed and i'm going to see you in the next video take care bye bye